good morning. My name is Eric Rowe. I am 20 plus years into uh, breeding dogs. Uh, 20, year, 20 plus years ago, I started with American Bulldogs, which I still have my own line. Um, they're best described as a battle, cro uh, battle cross and or catch dogs with a little extra in there. Um, my foundation stock is, uh, uh, would be Boss Hog, the Stout's Boss Hog, uh, bred to my um, Nia, and Nia I got uh, acquired from Bill Hines. And I've, since then I've line bred on that and a Williamson bred bitch named Cody. Uh, so I've done that for quite a while. I did Shepherds for several years. Then I got into the Patterdales. Um, I bred a, a Patterdale that I sent down to Louisiana, a dog named Rose Bones, um, uh, also known as Weaver's Bones. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't like to give you credit for who bred the dog. And, you know, they switched the names and this, that, and the other. But he's one of the best, uh, from what they tell me, in the country over the last several years. Well, when I was hunting the Patterdales, if you hunt them underground, uh, I like my dogs to go face to face, no, you know, no baying, just mouth to mouth, face to face, and get business done. What I noticed was if you are above ground, and here in the Midwest, we have raccoons that hit the 30 pound mark or more. So while they, the Patterdales, are divesting still they take uh, more injuries above ground in barns and stuff and we have a lot of people that have cattle barns that want the uh, coons out of the barns and stuff like that so i wanted a bigger uh dog with the same tenacity as the patterdale but a little bit more size so that I wasn't having as much down uh, time. Um, so my first breeding with the Patter Bull program was I bred a uh, imported dog named uh, Gould's Billy Jack, uh, um, also known as Boy. Uh, he was imported from Ken Gould's yard, and I bred him to one of my American Bulldogs. So I was thinking at the time that, okay, I wanted this 40 pound dog, um, which is more than ample for the stuff we were finding in uh, barns. But what happened, uh, and I, I had a litter and I have a dog still to this day named Thing One. I kept him and I kept his sister. Out of the 50-50 breeding, uh, I didn't get the teeth I wanted. Um, they were bulldog teeth, and they were small, uh, thick, uh, but they uh, were, were short. So when I put them on game, what you would find is the dogs were game. They were plenty big enough. They had enough mouth, but with the shorter teeth, there was a difference uh, in... Uh, damage that could be done to the game and quickness. So I didn't really like that. So I re-looked at my program and I bred to a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. I got the size that I wanted. It was not as big as the first litter. But I started getting the other tools that I wanted. As far as teeth, um, I still had um, dogs as far as 
of 220 pounds. Now, that's a dog that's not hunted a lot, so he's probably a little overweight. But even with uh, the ghoul Patterdale Terriers, it's not uh, hard for them to be 20 pounds or more. So mm -hmm. I associated the size of the standard of the Staffordshire Bull Terrier I used with the ghoul blood is the reason that I had a 20 pounder uh, in that litter and then everything else was 15 pounds or less. I really like the gayness on those dogs. Uh, the teeth size increased where I wanted. And, uh, you know, being a 50 50 litter, you got more in that particular litter. Um, I got a couple that look like Mom, which is Ripley, um, and then the other one that looked like Boy. I was very happy with that. I kept a female named Mila, who is the female I just bred to a dog named Bane. And so now we have three quarter uh, Patterdale Terriers and a quarter Staffish Bull Terriers. And they're going on six months old. And I'll tell you, Sean, they are everything that I could have imagined that I wanted. Mm -hmm. Now, totally lost the size. Um, there are no big dogs, but I used a, a, a working game bred a Staffordshire Bull Terrier, which was smaller than the first one that I used. So it reduced um, uh, the size on these dogs. But when I'm telling you that they're hard, they're incredible. Mm -hmm. They're already hunting, uh, uh, hunting. I've got one with the hunter up in Michigan, and he's absolutely in love with that boy. Um, I've got one with a couple, another uh, couple up in uh, Michigan also, and they do weight pulling, dock diving, um, a searching and stuff, and that's the Rico dog. I think I might have sent you some pictures of him. Mm -hmm. He's drop dead gorgeous, almost six months old, and 13 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, he's everything that you could ask for. He's got teeth. They're thick. He's got a uh, 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 good mouth so far, uh, and he's already... Um, being utilized to hunt uh, mice and rats. So that's uh, uh, going very well. I tried to get them in homes, working homes, so that we can prove whether we're on the right track or, or not. Uh, I've got a female that's out, on, uh, out in California. She's on like 25 acres, and we'll see what they're going to do uh, out there she could be utilized for quite a bit. Um, I just hope that they don't get her over ma uh, matched with the mountain lions and <laughs> everything else that runs around there. But, uh, you know, the program is basically, uh, you know, Ken Gould, just for instance, because I'm kind of familiar with his program, uh, for years uh, put Staffy Bull in his dog. You just didn't know how much or where. So to me, that's hard to breed, you know, because too much of one dog out of the line, you know, can produce uh, a certain look or, you know, not enough leg and different things like that. So what I wanted to do is have a dog that I can go into barns with and destroy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, also, at the same time, I want uh, dogs that are still spandable enough to get down in some of the um, holes that we hear for some of the vermin that we have here in the Midwest and, uh, you know, other places around the uh, country because I've been 
asked to send some out west and you know they like them down in Louisiana um, uh, you know so I wanted a dog with the tenacity to do everything uh, matter of fact out of this next litter we've been lucky uh, enough to be commissioned to um, hopefully send two puppies uh, overseas, there is a, a hunter that uh, eradicates iguanas in different countries, and he's going to utilize these to assist him in this work. So I'm kind of proud right now of where we're at. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I think four years in, almost four years in, we got a long way to go. But so far, so good. Uh, I do believe in calling. So, you know, everything, uh, you know, we only want the best out there. So, you know, we hopefully will continue to move forward. And the, these people that we're putting these dogs with uh, will continue to do, uh, keep their word and help us, help us prove them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, because what, you know, the old saying that the old guys told us was, you know, form, um, follow function. And again, if people see thing, he is an impressive looking uh, dog. Uh, but he didn't carry all the tools over. I mean, he's got enough leg. He's got enough uh, rear end. Um, but I tell you, I've, I've, uh, I've had him on enough stuff to know that you'd have to kill every hair on his head before he'll stop, but that's just not where, you know, I want it to be. So as a breeder, sometimes you have to, you know, start all over again. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that's what we did by adding the Staffy Bull in there and... The first female I used, Ripley, I borrowed her from a buddy down in Tennessee, um, Aaron, uh, Aaron, and um, he had uh, got her from a guy that said that she had hunted this, that, and the other, and she produced some good puppies for us. You know, this Mila female that I had, I've got uh, her brother up in Michigan, and nobody's really complaining, um, but... On the second breeding, you know, that I, I just did another breeding, I should say, and I brought in a hardcore, I call her the Widowmaker. Uh, she has to be the Grim Reaper's wife. Uh, Rose, I just did a breeding with her and Bane. Whew, I can't wait. Um, she's a little smaller than Ripley because she is the game bred work and stuff. Um, and she's serious. Mm -hmm. She's just flat out serious. So we're really looking forward to those pups. And then we'll figure out how to uh, incorporate um, what we have because we try to keep using uh, fantastic males. You know, and for, I'm really um, happy and really proud that uh, uh, one of my partners is Gil Applegate at Dark Side Kennels. So he uh, has had his hands on and uh, has a lot of stuff on ice of some very well, very well bred uh, Patterdales. And so our, um, we have a lot of males. Um, uh, to bring into the program, what this we're going to use Bane twice uh, because these pups are phenomenal, and we know that it's coming from him. Um, and then, you know, we have we're looking at maybe maybe uh, bringing in some um, uh, bull terrier, um, uh, but we'll see. You know, we don't want to push it too fast right now. 
but we've been having our eyes on some uh, uh, working bull terriers uh, because I'm really impressed by uh, them also. Uh, but I don't want to, uh, again, don't want to give up the function that a lot of people are liking, and that's getting down in the holes and things like that, you know, uh, busting up uh, dens in uh, the spring and stuff like that. So, uh, and if we don't want, I don't think that I want a 45 pound dog. I've got a couple of personal protection people that want one of these dogs, you know, 45, 55, 60 pounds, but, you know, and for catch dogs, because, you know, a lot of, of several people want to use these dogs for catch dogs. And like I tell them, they're earrings. You know, you can send a pack in, and a lot of people do that with Russell's and Patterdale's. I just don't see uh, the big thrill in that, but that's just me, you know, uh, uh, to each their own. But we, um, we're we going to keep exploring and trying to um, create uh, a dog that, you know, has all the components. You know, no dog's perfect, and I'm hoping to get some help from some other people, uh, uh, you know, down the road as far as, you know, even giving, helping me out. And that's the reason I'm reaching out to so many people right now, is I want these dogs tested. Uh, I'm not the type that just wants to keep throwing them out there. If we're not going to test them, we're not going to do it. Uh, and uh, that, you know, because if I could, I would start my own registry. I've always wanted to do that to where the dogs don't get permanent papers until they're proven. And you got to have it on film, you know, where they're doing work before you get your per uh, permanent papers. I'd like to see DNA done uh, to make sure that we're maintaining the health of these dogs and everything like that so i'm going to be pretty strict on these dogs uh, even uh, by limiting the sales of my females because john you know as well as i do i have a vision and if you let those females get in the wrong hands the wrong people are just going to breed them to anything you know uh, and I don't want that to happen. You know, we, I mean, look at all the breeds you uh, look at and, you know, research and stuff like that. And, you know, I think the, what brings so many of them down is they just breed them to anything. You know, are they, if somebody else gets a fancy, well, I want to do this. I'm going to be really, really, really hard on who my females go to. Uh, so that hopefully, at least for the first several generations, uh, 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 several years, that what my vision is doesn't get uh, uh, messed up, for lack of better words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Uh, that's been kind of neat. Uh, <laughs> um we uh, did a couple of breedings, and they're really nice. They're little piranhas. Um, I sent a female down to Yohani, and he seems to um, uh, like that girl. What I did is uh, I got a working healer, and I took her to uh, one of them. I took to a Patterdale Terrier. And the others I took to a bulldog. Now, I like the Patterdale Terriers, uh, of course, better. Um, not that the bulldog pups are um, any less, but the size that I got out of the cross with the Patterdales, maybe 20 pounds, males and females. Um, and, you know, it, I tell you, I'm really upset because I haven't gotten them in enough work in hands um, because it's a lot of energy uh, because doing with that I wanted 
again, you know, the healers are nice, and they tell me there's some kennels out on the West Coast that have some super, super nice healers, but I've also seen um, trainability issues with some, and uh, uh, just to uh, reflect back on the uh, patter bulls, by adding that uh, uh, Staffordshire Bull Terrier, I got a little bit more trainability rather than the hardcore, uh, I'm going to kill it, you know, uh, I'll take the punishment when I'm done uh, from the Patterdales. So, you know, that uh, the, the cattle bulls, they're good sized dogs. Um, for herding, uh, uh, they can be a little pushy, uh, but in the right hands, uh, they could, they would be fine, you know, and again, uh, they're only 20 something pounds, um, uh, great win, uh, they look like, it's a split because I have a couple black and white ones, and then I have the other ones that actually look like healers, and I'm telling you, the female I sent down to Yohani, you'd never ever know that it had another breed in there, you know. So we'll see what he does um, with her. I'm going to spend a lot of time on this Patter Bull program. Uh, you know, I've been in the American Bulldogs for over 20 years, as I mentioned, and we've got a couple of breedings uh, planned, but I'm getting a little older, so I'm hoping that my son and uh, my friends will take that over a little bit. Uh, I've got a partner out down in uh, out in Arkansas that has uh, one of my really nice uh, females, and uh, we collaborated on and bred my Dory female, which is one of the best uh, bulldogs I've ever owned to a leatherneck dog. So hopefully Mario will continue to support us and uh, in that way and I'm hoping my son will take the uh, uh, lead too on the Bulldogs because I really like them but I haven't been able to get out and hunt like I used to and you know uh, we still get out and we'll take them uh, when we go coon hunting and stuff like that just to get them some action uh, and to make sure that we're putting the right components together, but uh, a coon and a boar is a, a little uh, different test. So, you know, um, I'm kind of cutting back on uh, the American Bulldogs, and I really want to focus on um, uh, the Patter Bulls. And, uh, I, I really like the crossbred dogs for some reason. You know, we cry uh, purebred, 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 but so many of these breeds out there are recreation uh, at this point. So, you know, people can say what they want, you know, uh, but I've seen, like, I was looking for a uh, Caucasian, and I'm not real happy from what I saw. No, very little uh, with defensive drive at all a lot of prey drive, and I would swear there's some St. Bernard in there somewhere with a lot of these breeders, you know what I mean? So I'm learning that the dog that I want, I need to create or I need to be able to trust breeders uh, to have the type of uh, utility dogs or guard dogs or whatever that they say. Uh, mm -hmm. because there's so many people that are out there that are just jokes. They're making money is all they're doing. You know, lying in their pockets, uh, selling inferior dogs, skin problems, you know, breathing problems. And you know, right away I would be exposed if I'm selling dogs with breathing problems if, if they're going to brain. Um, you know, and uh, if they're not game, you're going to hear my name real quick that I'm uh, not doing what I'm supposed to because, like I say, uh, 
uh, young boy Coon will make a big dog turn into him. So something his own size, we can imagine what would happen. No, not at this point. We have um, uh, Shelly and Zach, like I said, they do weight pull, deck uh, diving, uh, and hunting. Uh, mostly the dogs are going to be hunted. Uh, mm -hmm. And then what Shelly them uh, are doing. Um, it would be neat uh, if my uh, if a guy I know up in uh, Canada, John Bonello, would tell me he would invest the uh, time into it. I'd send him one up uh, because he uh, trains shorty bulls, and so I know he has the skill to train out a small dog. Uh, personal protection, um, I think we could, you know, uh, you know, IPO and shits and up and all of that. Uh, it's since it is sport, I think we could do that. Uh, but, you know, with these dogs that I'm using, uh, I'm not putting a lot of man aggression in there uh, on purpose because when I was out with the bulldog, uh, when you're in the swamps and when you're out hunting them, the last thing that you want to be out doing is have a dog that will bite a man. And you know what I mean? So it's kind of the same thing. Uh, with uh, these dogs, you know, you don't. I don't want to have a dog out, and it's we got. I get hurt, and nobody else can pick up the dog without risk getting bit. You know, uh, so it'll be kind of neat. Like I said, if I could get John to uh, do stuff, I, I'm sure we're going to track with them. Though uh, I, that's almost going to be an unfair advantage. Uh, when it comes to tracking and uh, there's a, a lady down in Lexington I believe contacted me and said that she wants to do uh, like the races and uh, agility courses and stuff like that so I think that'll be neat uh, uh, because like the three quarter dogs they've got it they're, they're perfect for it they've got another big and you know uh, uh, kind of similar to the Jack Russell in style, so uh, we'll see how that goes. My grandfather was a jack of all trades, as uh, best ex uh, explain him, and he um, raised Dobermans at one point, and he had uh, sh German Shepherds, and matter of fact, one of the first crosses that I saw that I liked, he had a uh, German Shepherd and Husky, and really nice dog, really, really nice dog, and he had poodles for a while, you know, so I watched him uh, for years, uh, you know, with dogs, but my great-great-grandfather, uh, uh, my grandmother's mother, um, to feed his family of 12, he used to train horses, um, train uh, coon the hounds uh, down in uh, and around Gravel Switch, Kentucky, Hareville, and uh, Lebanon, Kentucky. So there's always been men in the family that train dogs. Um, and then I was lucky enough and uh, I have to say proud enough to have um, met Ray Weaver, uh, Onyx Kennels. Um, uh, he uh, was into American Bulldogs for years. Uh, I'm uh, partners with Fred Hatcher, um, who uh, Paramount Kennels, another uh, great Bulldog guy. <coughs> and uh, I've been uh, Jay Dorsey uh, uh, down at Trophy Hunters Lodge, you know, uh, Mitch Kramer. I've been able to meet a lot of these guys, Raven Stover. And um, I was able to keep my mouth shut and listen uh, to these guys that had more experience than I did. 
and um, it's it, it's been excellent. Um, like I mentioned, Mario Costello, uh, I have far more time in the, uh, the dogs than he does. But being able to watch these young people like himself uh, is just amazing. What he's doing with these dogs. Um, I mentioned uh, she uh, Shelly uh, Big and um, her boyfriend Zach. They are doing wonderful things, young people and the dogs. So, you know, when I say uh, mentors, they've been all ages. Um, uh, and I've been really fortunate. I don't want to. Uh, Chris Kelly uh, has helped me throughout the year down at Bluegrass Kennel. Um, uh, just great suggestions and uh, supporting me um, quite a bit. So, you know, I've had family members as uh, mentors. And I'm really grateful for that, you know, for my, again, my uh, grandparents. Uh, and then the people outside of that that I met in the American Bulldog uh, breed. I had the uh, privilege several years ago to actually go to Europe to judge a dog show, and I actually was able to go over and uh, visit uh, uh, some uh, yards over there. And so, uh, Patterdale Yards. So, uh, that was one of the most uh, overwhelming, uh, proud moments in my life uh, to actually be able to go and see Brian Nuttall's yard and experience his dogs firsthand. So, uh, you know, I, I, I've been pretty uh, fortunate with the people that I've been exposed to over the years that have uh, helped and uh, helped guide me uh, along the way. Absolutely. They, I've, there, I've got uh, dogs inside. I've got dogs outside. Um, it's, you know, I tell people if you're going into this to make money, you might not want. Uh, to try to do it because you know I bring in 30 bales of straw for my outside dogs you know I've got some on in kennels some on chains you know then we got the crates in the house you know we're rotating them you know so that you know they're always in good shape and things like that and I'm looking to relocate soon so uh Last year, I believe it was, I started working using above ground kennels. And I think I'm going to do that and possibly um, uh, turn, uh, you know, those um, uh, storage containers into a couple of kennels. Uh, again, I'm getting a little, uh, a little older now. So, uh, you, you know, my vision is like seven dogs, maybe six dogs. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, because I want people besides myself helping me with this program. So many breeders' greatest mistake is they won't admit their weaknesses, and I'm very hard on my dogs that I consider as breeding stuff. So I hope to only have in the Patterbull program at any time two studs and maybe five uh, females. And the way that I want to go about this is I want to set up a training course, uh, been talking uh, with a couple of my partners and uh, associates about uh, setting up, uh, you know, the underground training program, having the barns to go in and uh, do testing and stuff like that as well. 
during uh, the winter, we generally uh, we have a, a butcher that we go to, and um, he processes cattle. So we do what we call beef soup during the winter, which they get uh, boiled down uh, fat and you know stuff like that. But they get a lot of beef bones, femurs, rib cages. Uh, um, rice mixed in there and then uh, kibble um, you know um, and people that look at my pages see that I do vary in the brand of food but we always try to feed um, a, a good kibble um, uh, you know and what it lacks then we add to it by um, going to, you know, chicken thighs. We, I, you know, the company that I deal with, I know they love me to death on chicken thighs. And, you know, because I couldn't tell you how many pounds we uh, sell a year. And then we smoke our own uh, 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 cow bones, the knuckles and stuff like that. So we try to give them uh, uh, overall, um, while diverse um, diet, we try to make sure that, you know, we don't, I don't want to go get bones from feed stores and stuff like that because I've seen those end up having worms and stuff. Um, you know what I mean? And uh, so we try to do a lot of that uh, ourselves, you know, the beef soup in the winter. Uh, we go out, we get our uh, pot that we use to do boils in, we put all that uh, beef in there and put the rice in there, we boil it up, let it uh, cool off and so, you know, we pour it, it's like, uh, uh, it's like soup, you know, but we back that up, like I say, rib cages, you know, in different parts. Um, that the butcher gives us, so um, you know how it is. But they're fat <laughs> and uh, heavy during the uh, winter because we pack on. I'm in the Midwest. I mean, it's only uh, 30 degrees today, so they have to, you know, have those extra calories. And then, uh, you know, whenever the weather breaks here, we'll go ahead and get them back into. Uh, uh, the right shape, you know, uh, and fortunate, and that's what I like about the Patterdales and the Patterbulls also is where I live, I can be hunting in five minutes or less, any day of the week. Mm -hmm. and the Bulldogs, you know, I'm driving several hours, so, you know, uh, that's another thing that I like so much about these smaller dogs, like I say, we uh, uh, take the, a couple of the bulldogs with us sometimes, you know, just, uh, you know, as uh, finishing dogs and things like that. But, uh, uh, you know, I like the ability to be hunting uh, very quickly. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they're, my bulldogs, I can tell you right now, uh, I have one, if it hits 38 degrees, he's kicking the straw out of his dog. You know, now last night, he was happy that it was in there. But I tell you what, if it gets, like I say, 38, 40 degrees, I'm repacking his uh, dog house as soon as uh, it starts cooling. But like my old girl, Dory, Hey, she's living in the Taj Mahal because her uh, straw stays plush and, you know, I have igloos for most of them now. You know, I've tried barrels and I've tried other stuff like that, but I kind of like the igloos, you know, uh, mm -hmm. because I've done tests and different things. And if you set the igloos up right with enough straw and keep the, the dog houses small, in proportion to the dog's size, 
you know, it's nothing for those uh, uh, igloos to hold 60 uh, uh, plus degree temperatures in there. But, you know, you can't have a extra, extra large uh, igloo with a 20 pound dog. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. When I get off work two hours when I get off work uh, you know I'm like the mailman it don't matter if it's snowing raining or cold uh, they've been uh, uh, put up so they want to get out and we're talking about terriers you're not just putting them out and putting them back up you know so I get them out and I've got uh, ropes and I've got uh, uh uh, you know, uh, stuff on the chase, you know, balls, this, that, and other. I'm, you know, I go home and I let them out and, you know, who you can let out together um, and who you can't. So, you know, I try to run at least uh, two or three of them at a time. So, you know, uh, they are social. And when we go hunting, uh, I can take those dogs together. Um, so then in the afternoon, they're back out again. Um, and then before I go to work, they get to go out again. Uh, you know, so I'm probably <laughs> inside dogs is what I've talked about too. Uh, I'm going to guess four or five hours a day. Wow. Uh, and, you know, being as it's, uh, you know, I don't have my kids, my youngest is 28 now, so, uh, you know, I'm not running kids back and forth to school and things. Yeah. But, yeah, they're getting four hours a day. And on my days off, on nice days, oh, oh boy, are we, you know, I've got a field pretty close to me. And we've got a creek pretty close with some wooded areas around it. So, yeah, we uh, we get out. And have a good time. Yeah, awesome. We appre- I appreciate your time and yeah. you know, even considering us um, with this new program. You know what I'm telling everybody: just stay tuned. Uh, yeah. You know, um, most likely, don't be shocked. Uh, but we may be changing the name. Uh, I didn't know when I started calling them patter bulls that some people uh, uh, associate uh, pit bulls and patterdales with the patter bull name. And one thing that I can promise and another I can guarantee, there will be no pit bull in the, uh, the blood that comes off my yard. Um, again, that's one of the reasons I'm being very, very uh, uh, selfish uh, uh, with the females and only trying to get them in the right spots because if you want a Patterdale in a pit, there's Wren Terriers, there's uh, 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 Pitter Pats, and I know there's several other uh, people out there that are doing that. When you get one of my pattern bulls or whatever we decide to change the name with, you're going to have a, it looks like at this point we're going to use Patterdale Terrier. We're going to use the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. And like I said, I'm pretty excited about getting my hands on uh, a very, very uh, uh, bull terrier. Uh, uh, So, you know, but there will be no pit bull blood in these dogs. I think that's already been done. And, um, you know, like I said, guys, just uh, stay tuned. Uh, You know, everybody knows my uh, patter bull a page on Facebook. If you reach out to me, I get back to you as soon as I uh, I can. Comment, tell me what you think. Uh, you know, hunting content, of course, we, we can only put so much on there. 
but I promise you guys that uh, we are testing these dogs. Like I said, the breeding we just did with Rosie uh, and uh, Bane, uh, Patterdale people throughout the country know about Bane. Uh, and I can tell you firsthand that that Rosie, she's a widowmaker. So, you know, uh, these this next litter of puppies, they're only 50-50. I say only, but that's just because... You know, I'm looking forward to the three quarters, seven eighths, and stuff like that. But, you know, uh, I appreciate you <coughs> considering uh, to interview me. Um, you know, I really appreciate it, and other people are. So, we don't put a lot of hunting content on, but, you know, there's a reason that people are supporting us because they know that we are trying to to test these dogs and make sure mm -hmm. that um, you're getting a healthy, um, uh, well-rounded dog, you know. Mm -hmm. I've got somebody that said they want a calm, patterable, I don't know what that mm -hmm. is. Um, but, you know, they do love their owners, so they, they want to please. So I'm associating that with, that, you know, good obedience, um, they'll be there for you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm looking forward to, to to seeing the future with you, and and hopefully maybe bringing you back on when when uh, in, in a few months just to check check in in with you and see see what's new. And I appreciate um, it. okay, so, yeah, well, I appreciate it. We'll have a yeah. good morning. You too. We'll talk to you soon, and I look uh, forward to doing an interview with you again um, in the near future and yeah. show where we're at. Awesome. I appreciate okay. your time. All right. Appreciate you also. Take care now. You too. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye.